Hi, this is David at Mash IT. This is part two of our Razorblade 15 base model tweaking guide. Now in part one, we looked at the best ways to get as much performance as we possibly could out of the laptop. In this part two, we're gonna be looking at quiet gaming and extending the battery life of this Razorblade base edition. It is a great laptop out of the box, but as all gaming laptops, tweaking them makes a massive difference to the way they behave. So in this part two, very much like part one, we're gonna be using Razer Synapse software, MSI Afterburner, and throttle stop software. So to start off with, we're going to open up uh, Razer Synapse and the first thing we're going to do for this guide is we're going to make sure that we're in balance mode. As we know from part one, balance mode locks the CPU at 35 watts. It gives you a quieter fan profile than the creator mode. That's to be helpful for what we're looking for today, which is a quiet running, especially when gaming Razer Blade. Now we're going to open throttle stop. If you remember in part one, we undervolted the CPU to improve performance. Now we're going to keep our undervolt, but we're going to be creating new power profiles uh, to give us a number of different options for how much power the CPU is going to use. Now for performance, I'll normally keep that on the stock turbo boost limit. So if you do want the full power from the processor, you've got that option as number one. Now the next one we're going to do is number two, which is the game profile. Now you can see what I've got here is I've reduced the active turbo boost down. I'm going to have the one core to 40 and then I'm going to reduce all the other cores all the way down to my six core which is going to be on 35. You can copy mine here as a guide and as a starting point and then you can adjust as necessary. And then what I'll do is, is I'll put my number three. You'll see I've adjusted this down even further. So one core is at 35 and all the way down to 30 for my six cores. And then my last one, number four, I use this more of a sort of a, a really low power one. And I start at 30 and I drop it down to 26. This gives me a, a good deal of options to have either high performance mode, which is obviously quite noisy, all the way down to much lower performance, but a really quiet running system. Now, when I'm gaming, I'll usually use like either two or three for my performance modes. These give me a great balance of either noise and performance, um, depending on whereabouts I am to use the laptop. So I'm going to use the built-in uh, CPU benchmark in uh, Throttle Stop to show you the effects the profiles have on the CPU uh, when we're, we're running that CPU full pelt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a benchmark and I'm going to put it on the, the standard CPU performance. So this is hitting that CPU at 100% use. And you can see here I'm, I'm doing between 3.55 and 3.6 gigahertz on this CPU with my undervolt. Again, that's not bad. And if you were gaming, you'd get, be getting much higher clock speeds if, because most games don't use 100%. Now you can see here I switch it to game mode. Now as remember, game mode locks it to 3.5 on all of the actual cores. Now I've put it to my internet, which is number three. You can see I'm down to three gigahertz on all the cores. And then if I click it to number four, you can see we're down to 2.6, which is pretty much the CPU without turbo boost against all the cores. Now, one thing you will note is the actual package power on the CPU here, like running at 2.6, we're only pulling 22 watts. Now this has a massive effect on the fans. So if you're playing a game and you don't need a massive amount of power, you can use the lower profiles uh, and you'll be running at say 22 watts maximum and have a much cooler and quieter laptop in the process. You probably won't notice the frames that you're going to lose in a lot of games. Um, and then if you find that you are losing too many frames in the game that you're on, you can knock it up a profile notch. So you could put it to uh, profile three or profile two, you know, if you do need that extra performance. But then obviously with every profile notch you go up, you're going to get extra fan noise. Now our next task is to use MSI Afterburner to undervolt the GPU. Now what this is going to be doing is we're going to fix a clock speed at the minimum voltage that this GPU can run at so that the GPU itself runs cool or quiet while still giving us good performance. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Afterburner and over the actual overlay tab we're going to actually hit Control and F to bring up the frequency curve editor. Here you're going to see the curve for which it shows you the voltage at the bottom and the clock speeds up at the left hand side. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our lowest voltage, which is 700 in this case, and we're going to move it up to say 1500 as an example. And then I'm going to press Control and L, which locks on that one single voltage. And then we're going to go back and test that, make sure it's okay. Now close out of there and apply those settings within MSI Afterburner, and you've now locked 
uh, your GPU to 1500 megahertz at 0.7 volts. Now I'm going to quickly run uh, Unigen Valley here uh, on an extreme preset. This undervolt is stable and working as expected. Now you can see with Valley loading up, I've got the MSI afterburner overlay, uh, and it, straight away you'll see that the 1500 megahertz is the clock speed and it's absolutely locked. Normally this fluctuates with the NVIDIA sort of turbo boost. Now as we load into Unigen Valley, you can see that we're sticking at our 1500 megahertz, but our wattage is only 53 watts now, as opposed to the 80 odd watts that you get without this undervolt. Now, yes, we're running at sort of slightly lower clock speeds, but a lot less wattage on that GPU. Now, what this does is it still gives us good playable frame rates in most games, but at a much, much lower heat. So this combined with the undervolt and locking back the turbo boost on the CPU, makes this a really cool running laptop and quiet running laptop for those times that you don't need the maximum power out of it but you do want low noise. Now going back to Afterburner, I'm going to reset back to the default voltage and clock speeds. Straight away you can see we're up to 80 watts here on average and about sort of 1800 megahertz with this GPU. And straight away you'll see that the uh, temperatures are going to start rising and then obviously that will create more heat and more noise which is fine, obviously it's quite well controlled, but uh, it will be louder. So this is for when you want the quiet gaming, you lock it back to that 1500. Now what I'm gonna be doing here now, is I'm gonna go straight back into my voltage frequency editor. So that's control F over the overlay. And I'm gonna take the whole graph, so I'm gonna click on any point, hold the shift key, and I'm gonna drag the whole graph right down below the 1500. Now I'm going to take my first point at the 700 millivolts. I'm going to take that back up to 1500. And I'm going to then quit out. And I'm going to click apply. And what that'll do is because that first one is higher than all of the others, it creates a straight line. And that straight line will basically mean it will never go above that 700 millivolts and 1500 uh, megahertz. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that preset. So if you see, I click the save and I click, I'm using number two in this case, but probably use number one and create that as your, your quiet preset. And that's it. So now whenever you enable on the MSI Afterburner that profile, you're going to undervolt that graphics card and keep it at 1500 megahertz. You do still get a good uh, performance out of this laptop at this, but the, the laptop then becomes very, very quiet when you're actually gaming on it. So as I say, great in an actual office or library, or if you've got somebody in the room with you and you don't want to distract them. So just popping up a Time Spy, you can see there's still good performance with 5,500 score in that Time Spy benchmark. So for this last section, we're going to be looking at how to improve the battery life on this razor blade base, because the battery life isn't great out of the box. The first thing we're going to do is we make sure in throttle stop, we're going to use our battery saver setting, which is number four by default. And if you remember earlier on, this is where we put all of our turbo boost down to quite a low level. Then we're going to go into razor synapse. We're going to make sure we're on balance mode, and we're going to change the screen refresh rate to 60 hertz, because so that instantly starts helping. We're going to go into lighting, and on battery, we're going to take the brightness right off. We're going to deselect it so we have no keyboard backlight. Also, make sure you try and minimise the screen brightness and run it as low as you can get away with, because this has a big impact on battery life too. Lastly, make sure nothing is using your NVIDIA GPU. MSI Afterburner is a big culprit because that will always keep holding that NVIDIA GPU. Look in your task manager and look at GPU 1. Just make sure that there's no use whilst you're on battery if you are trying to save battery life. Now if I'm making all of these changes, it gave me a good extra hours battery life over the default configuration. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and it's helped you in some way. Put your comments down below if there's anything else, any other questions with regards to this video. And please subscribe if you want to see further content. Thank you for watching.